the bill already is very clearly uh, emerging this theme of self-actualization, of, of seizing kind of the opportunity and, and, and improving your life. And our next speaker has, uh, I think you'll, you'll agree with me, taken that very much to heart. Uh, he spent the last year reading self-help books and digesting them and, and working on understanding uh, what makes a good self-help book or, uh, or, or not. And he's going to share those insights with us today uh, on relating to those self-help books, along with some of the tips and tricks he's picked along the way. Uh, please welcome Steve Friedman to the stage, everybody. Hi, I'm Steve Friedman, and I'm going to talk about what's helpful about self-help books. So uh, recently I was reading a self-help book, and it brought up the idea of the law of attraction. Now, the law of attraction is the notion that if you uh, vibrate uh, your spirit on the correct positive wavelength, and uh, you want something really, really badly, and you truly believe that you're going to get it, then uh, the benevolent spirit of the universe is going to grant your wish because like attracts like. Now, when I read this, in the, uh, read this book, my first instinct was to roll my eyes, uh, toss the book in the trash, and wonder why a friend of mine who I usually think of as level-headed had recommended this book to me. Uh, but I decided to take off my cynic hat and think about it a little more and give this book another chance. So I decided to unpack this a little bit. Now, uh, what does vibrating on the right wavelength really mean? Well, that means keeping a positive attitude. Uh, and when you have a positive attitude, that makes it more likely that you will succeed in your goals. It also means being friendly to people. When you're friendly to people, then they're more likely to help you out. Uh, what about wanting something really bad? Well, there's the psychological principle of priming. Uh, that means that when you are thinking about something a lot, you're more likely to see it. Uh, so you'll notice opportunities. If you are, for example, if you are really looking to find love, you will notice that attractive person. Or if you're trying to improve your financial situation, you'll, you're more likely to see that job listing. Uh, and what about believing that you'll succeed? Uh, well, there's also the placebo effect. There's been studies that show that if you believe that you'll do well at a task, like running a race or taking a test, then just believing that you'll do well will actually improve your performance. Uh, there's also, you know, if you believe that you'll succeed, you're less likely to be stopped by setbacks. Uh, and also, if you believe you'll do well, you'll have a, a confidence that will inspire others to believe in you. So. After thinking about these things, I realized that maybe the law of attraction isn't as silly as it sounds. Now, it's not going to help you win the lottery. It's not going to make your favorite presidential candidate win. Uh, and it's not going to be a guarantee. But it can increase the chances of success for goals that are realistic, uh, uh, under your control or uh, something that's determined by your interactions with others. And it's not magic, it's psychology. Although, 
after reading further in the book, the example it gave was if your goal was hanging out poolside with a president. So actually, this book was kind of silly. Uh, but anyway, this brought up something that I've learned from spending the last year binge reading self-help books, uh, which is that I found there are two kinds of self-help books. So the first are books that offer concrete, practical advice for making incremental improvement in your life. And the second are books that tell you, you can do anything as long as you believe in yourself and try hard enough. Uh, there's also a third kind of book that uh, aren't really billed as self-help books, but can function that way if you are intelligent and inquisitive, which I think describes people at the Bill Conference. Uh, and those are books that are about psychology and how the mind works. Uh, and these books, uh, they tell you, because they tell you how your mind works, they can help you avoid cognitive tra traps and understand your own way of thinking, which can help you hack your brain, essentially, and you know, understand how you can you know, help yourself do things better. Um, but getting back to the you can do anything books, uh, I think these are problematic uh, because they're unrealistic. Uh, you can't change yourself completely into a different person overnight. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, I think also the authors of these books tend to lack empathy. Uh, they, uh, oh, sorry, that was a <laughs> jumped ahead there. Uh, they uh, succeeded in their goal uh, of becoming a self-help guru, but they have skills that the reader of the book may not have, skills of entrepreneurship and confidence and inspiring competence in others, which if you're reading self-help books, probably you don't have those skills to the degree that the author of the book has. Now those skills, they may be innate, they may be something you can learn, but you would have to actually learn them. You can't just decide to have them. It would be like if LeBron James wrote a book on playing basketball that said, you just have to try that really hard and throw the ball through the hoop. Uh, that's not going to help if you don't have LeBron James's skills and talent. And just to be clear, I'm not talking about following your passion. Following your passion is great. It's just that you can't be a different person overnight. Um, and these books also have a dark side to them uh, psychologically, which is that because they say you can do anything if you just try hard enough and believe hard enough, the implication there, and some of these books will outright say it, is that if you don't succeed at your goals, uh, then it's your fault because you didn't try hard enough and didn't believe hard enough, so you suck and you're pathetic and you should feel like a loser. So they're kind of not only setting you up for failure, but then kicking you while you're down afterwards. Um, but then the good kind of self-help book, oh, sorry, uh, a, a quote that kind of summarizes these books uh, is, Always remember that as long as other people are gullible, there's no limit to what you can do. Uh, that's by Scott Adams, who uh, was the creator of Dilbert and then went on to write self-help books, which are kind of along that, those lines. Um, so the good kind of self-help book are the ones that offer concrete advice on things that can improve your life. And these books tend to give you ways practical ways to make small progressive improvements in your life that will add up over time. And the way to do that is to either get rid of bad habits or form new good habits over time. And these need to be sustainable habits. The key word there is sustainable. For a habit to be sustainable, it's got to be something that you're willing and able to keep for the rest of your life. Uh, which means it can't be something that you hate doing, it can't be something that's incredibly difficult for you to do, because if that's the case, you're not going to keep doing it. You know, if you're trying to lose weight, going to some sort of boot camp is a terrible idea because you're not going to have someone screaming in your face to exercise every day for your life. 
so for a habit to be sustainable, it's got to be something that is easy, convenient, uh, enjoyable, small, uh, provides immediate positive feedback, or is something that uh, involves progressive changes that build up over time. Uh, so some examples of real life changes uh, that you can put this to work at. This is something from my own life, and sorry, the conversion from PowerPoint to Keynote uh, cut off the words here. But uh, I had a problem with arguing with people over on the internet. And something I did to help with this is every time I was tempted to write a rant on the internet, instead of writing it on Facebook or an email, I would write it in a text document and then come back to it later to decide if I really wanted to post it. And usually when I'd come back later, I'd say, no, this isn't a good idea. But it didn't take any willpower for me to do that because I was still writing the rant I wanted to write. I was just writing it in a different window. Uh, so it was something that was really easy to do, but it dramatically improved my life because I wasn't getting into all these internet arguments. Um, another thing is if you have a problem with road rage, uh, you can try and reframe the way you're thinking about it and realize you don't have control over the way other people are driving. Yelling and screaming isn't going to change anything. Uh, you know, you're still going to get to work three, three seconds later whether you yell or not. Uh, you can also try thinking like maybe that person has really bad diarrhea or maybe they just found out that their kid was in a terrible accident. Uh, and it, once you start trying to not have that road rage and not try and yell and scream, you'll get the immediate positive feedback of you're calmer and more relaxed when you get to work instead of being really stressed out. Um, if you're trying to eat better, you know, you can't completely change your diet and be healthy overnight. You've probably tried doing that and haven't been able to stick to that, but you can make small changes. If you like e eating fast food, you can still eat fast food, but get the small burger instead of the large burger, or maybe cut out the french fries. And you know, if you want to eat a lot, still eat a lot, but cut out the carbs when you eat a lot. And then once you've built that habit, start another habit where you'll cut something else unhealthy. And over time, you'll be eating healthier and healthier so that you will eventually have a healthy diet instead of trying to change everything at once. Um, if you want to exercise more, Find an exercise you like, you know, start playing a sport that you like, or go on hikes with friends where you can have pleasant conversation. Uh, another good tactic is to mix uh, an unpleasant task with a pleasant one. So if you want to clean your house more often, you can start listening to podcasts or music while you clean. Or going back to exercise, you can put a, a treadmill or a stationary bike in front of your TV so you watch your favorite shows or movies while you exercise. Um, so some of the, my favorite books on self-help, uh, and I haven't read every self-help book in existence, but these are just my favorites. Uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Uh, this was, I'd say, is the book that's had the biggest impact on my life in terms of reading it convinced me to change how I was acting and thinking. Uh, and The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg uh, was also a, an excellent book. Uh, in terms of books about psychology and how the mind works uh, that function as self-help books, uh, there's Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Influence the Psychology of Persuasion by Robert Cialdini, or Cialdini, excuse me, and The Honest Truth About Dishonesty, How We Lie to Everyone, Especially Ourselves, by Dan, Dan Ariely. So I just want to end with a couple quotes about uh, how habits can help improve your life. There's uh, From the Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. There's This is the Real Power of Habit, the insight that your habits are what you choose them to be. And uh, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. So, thank you.
probably, I think the causation goes the other way. I think it's because people are becoming less happy that there's a need for more self-help books. I would say, you know, I'm not an expert on how society changes, but I would guess it's probably social media and people fighting over Facebook that makes people less happy, but, you know, that's just my opinion. I'm not, you know, claiming to be an expert on that. Uh, Paul? Usually I end up deleting it. I think so. I mean, I think, you know, I have common sense, so <laughs> if I read something and I think, well, that's really stupid, I, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> You know, something that I would like to do is is write a sort of meta self-help book that is synthesizing that. Um, or, you know, I, I think might be fun is actually an idea I have is sort of a, like, personal experience book where it's like every week I go through a self-help book and actually try to implement each thing from it and kind of keep a diary and possibly stack them where I'm trying to do all of them as I go on. I think that might be kind of a fun, a fun book, but you know, that's sort of a, maybe I'll do that at some point in our project. to publish it anonymously. <laughs> I have a friend who's a rabbi and a lot of friends who kind of come from that Jewish tradition that, you know, so I kind of know a lot of that. Um, you know, I think that there is some to learn from religion. You know, I think that religion is ancient man's attempt to understand philosophy and live better. Uh, so even though I'm not religious, I don't think, you know, you should completely dismiss all the philosophical aspects of it out of hand. Uh, so, you know, I think, yes, you can look at that and try to, you know, absorb the good lessons from it. 